gates. This week's Hedger tells the story of Yaakov's sons leaving the safe confines of their home in Canaan, what will later be called Eretz Yisrael, to travel to Egypt. In today's times, Yaakov's family would be called privileged. They were wealthy and lived in a compound on their own. They had little to do with those around them, and the few incidents that had them come in contact with those around them were not neighborly. The family's life wasn't easy. Early on in their son's life, they quarreled to the point where their strife saw one of their own sold off to slavery by their own hand and through their own jealousy. They were depressed with mourning over his lost son. As the family continued following God's word, their sister Dina was kidnapped and raped by the prince of the city of Shechem. This incident led to wars. Two of Yaakov's sons, Shimon and Levi, attacked the city of Shechem. This further alienated Yaakov's family from those around him. After this harrowing experience, the famine hit the world. Centered in Egypt, the famine hits hardest other regions of the world, especially Canaan. In Egypt, Yosef had set the country up to survive a seven-year famine. People of the world over came to purchase food and bring it back to their home countries. In Canaan, people were starving and eating the grass of the fields. Immensely wealthy, Yaakov and his family had plenty of food, yet Yaakov was nervous that his neighbors would figure out that he had stockpiled food. Fearing another skirmish with his neighbors, Yaakov sent his sons to Egypt to purchase food to give the impression that he too was suffering. When Yaakov's sons came down to Egypt, they entered Egypt inconspicuously. Yet each son was in such an impressible force that each aroused the suspicion of the Egyptian army. Thought to be spies, the brothers were brought to the fr in front of the Egyptian second-in-command. They had no idea who, what they were in for. One can only imagine their confusion, fear, and apprehension as they were brought to the residence of the second most powerful man in the world. For 22 years, Yosef had been waiting for this moment. His prophetic vision had foretold this exact moment. The second-in-command was Yosef, the son that was sold into slavery by his brothers. Yosef recognized his brothers instantaneously, yet his brothers didn't recognize him at all. While their confusion could be ascribed to Yosef aging 20 years since they last saw him, the Ramban explained that Yosef's brothers couldn't bring themselves to see Yosef for who he really was. In their minds, Yosef had done wrong, and he deserved the eternal fate of a spy. It would be impossible for Yosef to be sitting in front of them, the second in command. Being blinded to the truth is a common handicap among people. While we claim to want to know and discover the truth, everyone is plagued by biases and a world perspective that they hope to see the world through. All these handicaps inhibit a man's ability to find the truth. For a person to really experience the truth, they need to examine their own biases and be able to set them aside. Yosef's brothers weren't able to do that. When they originally sold Yosef, and still weren't able to do it when faced with Yosef as a second-in-command in Egypt. Bias to the truth is a dangerous quality that we need to make sure we rid ourselves of. Shabbat Shalom.